Hello to all of our Facebook fans and followers, as well as to our YouTube channel uh, subscribers. Uh, this is your favorite executive pastor, Pastor B of the New Calvary Baptist Church, and I'm here with a member and dear friend of mine, none other than one of our trustees, Sister Sandra Norman, and she's here representing our New Calvary Baptist Church's Voters Educators, Educators Committee, and we wanted to talk with you all today about a little bit about the mission and the goal and the focus as we prepare for voting on November the 3rd. Uh, New Calvary Baptist Church is a family of Christian believers who have been transformed to worship and serve through the liberating power of Jesus Christ. Our mission is to walk in faith in step with Christ so that we might help to empower God's people, our community, and the world. In fulfilling our mission of empowerment, we also want to make sure that we focus on education educating persons who are going to be making life decisions during the voting season. Our Voter Education Committee is made up of Sister Glennis Mason as well as Trustee Diane Bacon. And what they've been doing in this voting season is they've actually been uh, going out to rock the vote as far as encouraging people to register for voting efforts. Our church has also partnered with the Norfolk chapter of the NAACP as we have been doing stroll to the polls as we lead up to people voting early in this uh, voting season. And we're now preparing for voting day, November the 3rd, 2020. And so what we want to do is give you some information about what to expect as we prepare to go to the polls for those of us who have not yet voted. And so I want to thank you, uh, Sister Norma, for being with us today. My pleasure. Very good. And so what I want to do is to ask you, Sister Norman, how do we prepare or how can we prepare for voting on November the 3rd? Okay. First and foremost, you have the right to vote. When you go to the voting precinct, know what's on the ballot. On this ballot, you will see candidate for president and vice president, candidates for U.S. Senate and the U.S. House of Representatives, local candidates, some localities will have uh, council members, school board, etc. And there will be two constitutional amendments. Be prepared to wait. Take with you a chair, an umbrella if the weather looks bad, snacks, especially if you are diabetic or have medical conditions that require you to eat on a regular basis, please take what you need with you. The poll hours are from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Take an ID with you. It doesn't necessarily have to be a pictured ID, but you need something to identify who you are. You may take a utility bill with you that has your name on it or a mortgage book that has your name and address on it. And for those of you who still have your voting card ID, you can use that as well. If you have problems at the poll and the election official that you're speaking with cannot resolve your problem, ask for the chief. The chief is the official who is in charge of that precinct. If you feel that someone is trying to intimidate you, report that to an election official. If that election official cannot resolve it, ask for the chief. And if the chief is unable to resolve it, they always have the right to ask for the assistance of the police. As long as you are in line by 7 p.m., you will be able to vote. The line may be wrapped all around the building, but as long as you're in it by 7, you have the right to vote. Now, if you come at 7.01, 7.02, you will not be allowed to get in the line. If you need help voting, you may take someone in the polls with you. That person must sign a form indicating that you have asked for and they are providing assistance with you voting. If you make a mistake on your ballot, don't try to fix it. Ask for another ballot. The original ballot will be put in the spoils container. 
If you discover that you are at the wrong voting precinct, one of the election officials can direct you to the right polling precinct. If you are age 60 or older, if you have a disability, you may do what is called curbside voting. Curbside voting is when an election official comes out to the car, you give them your ID, they go in, make sure that you are in fact a registered voter, then they bring you a folder which will contain your ballot, a pen, and generally a voting, uh, a voting, a voted little decal. If you have requested and received a ballot by mail and you have decided that you want to go to the precinct and vote, that's okay, but make sure you take that ballot that you received in the mail with you and submit it when you attempt to vote. Do not destroy that ballot. If you have a problem that the chief cannot resolve, ask for a provisional ballot. If you vote provisionally, you must go to your voter registrar's office within three days to resolve whatever that issue was. Remember, voting is a three-step process. First, you must register. Next, you must show up. And third and most importantly, you must vote. Remember, your vote counts. So register, show up, and vote. We are so grateful, uh, Sister uh, Norman, for you being here representing the Voters Education Committee. We are grateful to our senior pastor and his leadership, the Reverend Dr. William Marcus Small. We want to encourage you to share and to like this information and make sure that you get it out so that you know what's going on in your area. And so that whatever you do, do not forget to register, do not forget to show up, and most importantly, have your voice heard by voting. God bless you. This is your favorite executive pastor of the New Calvary Baptist Church wishing you a great day, and we'll see you at the polls. God bless.